one of the biggest things that I've learned is first of all you have to move fast you have to move fast number one and you have to understand the power of momentum the reason why my clothing business never got off the ground is I did not understand the power of momentum momentum is only achieved through action and motion and so I think any and I even see it with the guests that we interview they have an incredible bias towards action you need to go out into the world and put something out there welcome to the Callum Johnson show today we're going to do it a bit differently so obviously a lot of the times we're bringing you interviews with incredible entrepreneurs world-class successful people in their craft however this is the Callum Johnson show I wanted to bring you a solo episode get to know a bit more about me what's happening behind the scenes with the podcast and so for today's one we're going to do a Q&A I'm always getting questions from the audience from people that listen on a range of different topics from like more about me to also the podcast to marketing to all of these different things so this was the perfect opportunity to give you guys some of that content and information okay so we're going to start with the first question which is from Jay Yang which is what's a common theme trait you've noticed between most of your guests this episode is brought to you by free agency if you want to take your career to the next level free agency is a company that you should check out they manage and represent talent in the tech industry and they provide you with a dedicated talent agent to help you find engage and win top of market roles that will maximize your earning potential no more leaving money on the table stop job searching alone and start building your dream career today with free agency anyway back to the show okay so for context most of our guests highly successful entrepreneurs uh, multi-million dollar businesses and the reason why I select the people that I do is I noticed a common trait coming into the working world into the professional world among su- people that are disproportionately successful but not only successful they actually enjoy what they do I really wanted that combination because i see a lot of people that outwardly they look successful but they don't actually find fulfillment enjoyment in what they do and so every guest that we get on they are doing the thing that they feel like they were put on this earth to do the thing that speaks to them the thing that they would do even if money wasn't attached to it so that's the first thing that i can just say on an extremely basic level like that's the first thing that's what we look for i would say all our guests have that in common however we've done over 50 episodes at this point and i think sitting in this chair it's a unique seat right you really get to observe people's body language i'm listening intently to what they say and i say all of that to say that you really get to know the person when you're asking the questions and you're listening and you're doing this And so if I was going to say a trait between all of these people and this goes from like a Sahil Bloom to a Zach Pogrob, we had Nate Jones on a few weeks ago, Tyler Schmidt who was Gary V's right-hand man. I would say the most the thing that stands out amongst all of them is self-awareness. And when I say self-awareness, it's just I would define it as like a knowledge of self. they know the areas where they're strong they know where their interest lies they know where they disproportionately add value and i think that's such an important thing because when i was working in the corporate world or when i was working at startups i think i saw that the people that disproportionately would get ahead they were opening they were operating in almost like their zone of genius in the places that they just had that was where their unique advantage lay and i think the the people that we get on the pod i've noticed that they all have a deep awareness in the detail as to what they are uniquely good at i remember i was talking to sahil bloom and i asked him i said sahil like what is your what would you consider your superpower right like you've been able to build these huge audiences you're known for your writing you have this background in finance in investing you have this incredible network but like to you what is your superpower and the thing that he said straight away is i'm just going to keep showing up 
simple. I'm going to keep showing up again and again. And I remember at the time, actually, he was doing ice baths every morning. And he even said, he was like, I don't care how much I fucking hate this shit. I'm showing up again and again and again. No negotiating. I'm not negotiating with myself. And so I think when you're talented and you have an awareness of that talent and you also know where that talent is going to be appreciated, which is key, I think it explains a lot of the reason why the guests that we get, they get the results that they do. And so like to the audience, if I was going to say anything you can learn from that is just really, first of all, go out in the world and do a lot of shit. I remember Megan Lois said this on our episode, which is she experimented a lot. She did a bunch of different internships. She worked in a bunch of different industries and that gave her an awareness of what are some of the things that she liked to do. And then from there, she could also think, okay, this is also where I'm disproportionately adding value. I'm getting this concept quicker than my peers in this one area. So you wanna learn what do I like to do? Where do I disproportionately add value? And once you have, once you clearly know those two things, then you can start thinking about, okay, what am I going to play for the long term? Because that, that's where the results come, right? Is in the long term. Um, and what's interesting, like you wouldn't think that if you had spoken to, to 50 like very successful entrepreneurs and I asked you what the common trait is, you're probably not thinking I'm going to say self-awareness, but that's the thing that really stands out. Yeah. Cool. And then the second question, what's one thing you learned about yourself since starting this podcast? That's an interesting one. You know what? Here's where I'm going to take it. I've wanted to be an entrepreneur since I was like in my early teenage years. So 13, 14 years old. When I was in school, that kind of manifested as me flipping Yu-Gi-Oh cards to other kids. I would buy them from eBay and then sell them to kids at my school and just try and make a quick profit and then buy some more and go again. I was flipping shit. By the time I got to university, I was thinking one thing I really wanted to do was start a clothing line. And so I start this business and don't worry, I'm going to get back to the key learning. I start this business first year of university. I'm super excited. At the time, this athleisure trend was taking off and I was like, okay, I'm going to make the next one. Even companies like Gymshark and all of that, they weren't really big yet. And I was looking at some of the early stuff they were doing and I was like, I'm going to make it. And so I'm super excited, full steam ahead. I go into this business and I remember I spent months and months trying to develop the perfect t-shirt design. And when I say trying to develop, it was literally me finding a designer online and just going through these rounds and rounds of revisions and I would never be satisfied, right? In my mind, I've been, you know, I've been looking at Nike, I've been looking at Adidas and I'm like, I want to make a product out of the gate that hits that mark for me that when I look at it, I'm like, okay, everyone is going to want to wear this. And so eventually it took me like three months. We came up with a prototype. It was nowhere near the standard that I want wanted and I ultimately just gave up. And from that moment, I would always have kind of this thought, this self-doubt of, can I really commit to being an entrepreneur and doing my own business? And can I follow it through? And so it's interesting with this podcast, I've been doing it for a year and a half. In the last six months, I committed to doing it weekly. We've done 20 straight, 20 straight weeks of posting episodes. And so I think the biggest thing, one of the biggest things that I've learned is, first of all, you have to move fast. You have to move fast, number one, and you have to understand the power of momentum. The reason why my clothing business never got off the ground is I did not understand the power of momentum. Momentum is only achieved through action and motion. And so I think, and, and I even see it with the guests that we interview, they have an incredible bias towards action. They make things happen. And I saw this with myself earlier on when I was in university, 
I see it with some of my friends and my peers when they talk about doing businesses or they talk about starting something. There's too much thinking. There's too much chatter. There's too much theorizing. You need to go out into the world and put something out there. Develop that t-shirt design in a few days and instantly put a, a website up and start selling. Or, you know what, let's even take it down from there. Go to a local event or go to one of your friends or even, I don't know, go to a fashion store, like an independent fashion store and see if they will purchase your design. You want to get proof of concept as early as possible, but it's not even the proof. It's to demonstrate to yourself that you're serious and you're going to take action towards the goal. And I think from just doing this podcast consistently, doing it on weeks when I have a bunch of other work and projects, this podcast still comes out. Doing it on weeks where we have guests that cancel episodes, this podcast still comes out. Doing it on weeks where the previous podcast episode didn't perform how we expected, this podcast still comes out. And so I think really what I learned about myself is I can execute. Like I can get it done. And also it doesn't take anything special. It's a mindset more than anything. It's not some special genetic code. It's not some, your upbringing or whatever. It's the mindset. I remember Kobe said this. He said, I'm not negotiating with myself. I'm just going to get it done. And that's it. You can't negotiate with yourself. You have to just get it done. And we've done it for 20 straight weeks, but for me, it's okay. Can we do this for years? Just being consistent. And so I'm building that muscle and, and I'm aware, I'm deeply aware that I can do it. Yeah, that's a big one. We're going to, we're going to switch, switch, switch gears slightly. Ronald Barrera, he asked, why did you decide to quit your job? You know what? Let me start by just giving some context. I moved to America about four years ago. First job out the gate was in strategy consulting, pretty corporate role. I then went on to work at a startup for about a year. We got acquired. I then worked at another startup for eight to nine months. And I decided to leave about six months ago to go full time doing my own thing. So that's the background to it. But let's get into why I actually decided to leave. To put it really bluntly, my ambition was always to build a business. My ambition was always to own something. And I think at the earliest point, the reason why I wanted to do that is, and, and there's different points to it. I, I remember listening to an interview with Dame Dash, a successful music producer, worked with Jay-Z to build Rockefeller, discovered artists like Kanye West, also Jay-Z. And he goes on The Breakfast Club and he has this exchange with DJ Envy and he says to him, you guys run the premiere show on this station. However, say 15, 20 years from now, you want to be able to give your son a job at this station. You want him to be in that seat where you're sitting, or you just want to give him an opportunity. Since you're not an owner in this business, you don't, you can't do that. Even though that you've brought all this revenue, you've brought all this value to this company, unless you have equity, you're not able to do that. And I remember it stuck with me because I think one of the things that's always been important is like legacy and just having something that, I don't know, you're, it will, it doesn't end with me. Like my other people around me can take it up and it gives me influence and something that like I built this thing. And I think to a certain extent, legacy is temporary, right? Like a lot of people that have achieved phenomenal things they pass away and then as a society, we move on, we go to the next thing. And so legacy is temporary. I think as I've gotten more and more into this, um, I just love the upside of being an entrepreneur. And I remember someone actually said this in a podcast that I listened to. He said, entrepreneurship is just self-development. Um, a lot of the problems, especially at an early stage, a lot of the problems in your business, they're not business problems. They're personal problems. The reason why your team is not performing, if you're the CEO 
You set the standard, you build the systems, you set the culture. The reason that your team is not performing, it's because of something that you haven't implemented or something that you haven't set up correctly or you haven't incentivized or you haven't done hiring correctly. And so I think for me, from an early age, I've been huge into self-improvement. I've loved the process of just getting better and better at a craft. And entrepreneurship just feels like the ultimate game of self-improvement to me. And a lot of the reasons that's holding what I'm trying to build, what's holding it back, to a certain extent, it's time and experience. But there's also certain beliefs there's certain skill sets that I need to master. And so there's a lot that comes with doing your own thing and leaving your job and kind of moving in a different direction. But for me, it's just worth it. And it just, it suits my personality. And honestly, I'm at a point where I just want to see how far I can take it. Like truly, how far can this go? Where does my potential end? And I think it's limitless. And so I just committed to this journey of let's get better. Let's constantly improve. And as I make those improvements, it's going to compound tenfold into my business. And so that's something, that's just something that's exciting to me, man. And even though I think there's a lot of like ups and downs and trials and tribulations in this journey, it's worth it for that reason. So yeah, I think the upside, the opportunity to have legacy and then just understanding the value of compounding. And as I get better, wanting to capture that value. Um, yeah, that's why I do what I do. Um, how did you prepare to do a podcast? Yeah, okay. So I guess there's actually two, two ways that I could answer this. And I'll actually answer both. So I almost see it as there's like the macro and then there's the micro. So the macro is, I guess, what made me feel ready to start a podcast and do it weekly. And then I guess the micro is like every time I step in and I do an episode with a guest, what is my preparation? I'll start with the micro. I see a lot of people and I see a lot of interviewers and I see a lot of conversation online about research when it comes to podcasting and just doing the deepest research on the guests. And I have nothing bad to say about it. Everyone has their own style. And you have to be aware of your style and what's your gift when it comes to this. What's your edge? But I think for me, we do a certain baseline of research for every single guest because I want to have an awareness of what they do, what makes them special. And if we hadn't done that, I wouldn't even have wanted to come them on wanted them to come on there's a certain thing about each guest that sparked intrigue in me that I wanted to have a conversation but that's really how I see this podcast it's a series of conversations and the way that I approach each episode in my preparation is how can I put myself in a headspace and in a position to have an incredible conversation and so even if you just thought about conversations that you've had with friends, it wasn't or maybe you were at a bar or at a party and you just struck up this incredible in the moment conversation with someone. It wasn't that you were super well researched on their history, on things that they've said, on their achievements. It was probably a combination of the fact that as individuals, you both just clicked, number one. But number two... You were in a space to have a great conversation. You were incredibly present. You were listening and you were listening to offer value, actively listening, not just listening to respond to them. And so that's the way that I approach it. And so for me, what does that mean in practice? It means that it means meditation, committing to that every day, meditating so that I can be present when I'm in this chair it means going on walks, it means reflecting, it means giving myself time to think and develop a point of view on things, it means just being calm and being settled. I truly approach it from that standpoint of how do I just put myself in a 
mindset and preparation wise to have a great conversation and that's it that's how we prepare for every episode and yes there is research that goes into that but I think and what's funny actually I remember one of my mentors said this to me about the podcast he said and like very successful guy like an eight-figure entrepreneur and he said to me your goal with every episode is that you bring out something in that guest that they've never discussed that they've never mentioned that they've never even thought about that they're actually learning something about themselves through their conversation with you and the way that I think you do that is through just being incredibly present and just really truly listening and so for me I actually don't like to go too deep into the research because I find that you start thinking about all the research you've done and the questions that you've already formulated versus just being super present in this moment. So for me, that's how I prepare for each episode. Um, in terms of on a macro scale, in terms of if you wanted to start a podcast, how you would know you're ready, maybe I'm going to give a hot take or like a controversial take on this. I don't think you ever know that you're ready to do anything, truly. And to be honest, I think waiting to be ready it's the worst thing that you can do. I, I remember Naval said this. He said, you need to reduce the amount of time that it takes from thought to action. Because all that's happening in that time, that it's that you've already had a thought that you should do something, but you haven't taken action. The only thing that's building is fear. If you think about, and he gave this analogy, he said, if you think about getting into a cold shower, and you imagine you're outside of the tub, you turn the water on, it's freezing cold, frigid cold. The water's coming down. If you were to instantly, as soon as you turn the nozzle, you instantly walked into the shower, you wouldn't have any fear or any procrastination about stepping into that shower. And if anything, your body would assimilate to the conditions and the temperature and it would be fine. The fear comes from the fact that you turn the shower on and then you watch as the water comes down and then you feel it with your fingers, you dip your toe in and you're like, wow, that's cold. But you haven't fully immersed yourself yet. The fear is building in that gap, in the gap between thought and action. And it's exactly the same thing in any business that you want to start, in any new hobby. If you wanted to go to the gym, if you wanted to start a podcast, if you wanted to start posting more on Twitter or TikTok or a YouTube, the fact that you've had this thought of I should do this thing, but then you've delayed. And a lot of the times people will delay to ask more questions or to get advice or to prepare. Um, and I did all of this stuff. But to be honest, I think the way that I prepared is I didn't. I just went, I put 10 interviews on my calendar. I committed to doing them and then I showed up and recorded and then I published. That's all it is. And I think things are actually incredibly simple. It's incredibly simple. All doing a podcast is a recording and then publishing. You don't need any preparation. You've been, and I even think about this for myself because people will be like, oh, how do you know? How do you know what questions to ask? Or how do you become a good interviewer? Or how do you ask good questions? And obviously there's a craft that can be learned and mastered. But think how many conversations in your life you've been in. Thousands, if not millions of conversations throughout your life. You know how to ask questions. You know how to listen. You know how to speak and be in conversation. It's all there. You're already ready right now. You just need to go and do it. And yeah, I think once I took that mindset and I just got to it, real strong bias towards action, it happened. And then one of the final ones here, why did you choose the business topic for the podcast? Oh, this is a good question. And actually, you know what? It relates even to the name of the podcast. At first, the pod was called Behind a Thread. We used to interview these huge accounts on Twitter. Obviously, tweet threads was like this huge thing on Twitter. And so we were getting to know the person that was 
behind the thread, the person that had written the tweets that people didn't usually get to hear from. About six months ago, I changed it to the Callum Johnson show. And the reason why, there's this quote from Naval. He says that you want to play long-term games with long-term people. That is the way that you become successful. You you play long-term games with long-term people. And so I started to think to myself, I was like, okay, I need to expand the time horizon. I need to extend the time horizon. And so the Callum Johnson show was a commitment to this is not just based off like a trend or like a cool content thing that people are doing with tweet threads. This is almost like documenting my life. And so I don't even, we interview a ton of entrepreneurs and business people and I love those conversations and I love being able to learn from those people, but the conversations are gonna evolve. And the reason the conversations are going to evolve is because I'm going to evolve as a person. And so just what I'm personally interested in, what I personally want to know, what my audience wants to know is going to evolve. And so I think the reason we're doing a lot of business right now is because I'm in this world. I'm trying to build a company. I'm literally learning things. I'm feeding those right back into the podcast. And so... At this period in my life, this is really something that I can speak to. It's really something that I'm going through every day. And I think the audience, I want the audience to be able to feel that authenticity and feel that interest and feel that passion for it. And so that's why for now we're in the business, the business realm. And I love it. And I think there's so much, there's so much value there. And yeah, I wanted to share it. I wanted to share it with the audience. So yeah, that that is pretty much that. I guess one one little bonus point bonus point that I'll touch on is give me just feedback on this style, on these solo episodes, on getting to know more of my thoughts. I think the goal is going to be able to do one of these a month. And then based on the reception, we'll see if we do more and more. But I like being able to to speak, to give this to the audience, to give this to you guys. And you know what? Let me know also topics that you want me to talk on, what you're interested in. And yeah, we can dive more into it. But yeah, that's a wrap. It's Callum Johnson. It's been a pleasure. See you on the next one. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to the channel. We're having fire conversations every week on the podcast. Before we end the episode, a quick word from our sponsor, Free Agency. What if I told you there is a good chance you're leaving money on the table in your career? It would kind of annoy you a bit, right? Well, Free Agency aims to stop that. They represent and manage talent in the tech industry. Here's how they do it. First, they provide you with a dedicated talent agent. Think about this as your career quarterback. They understand you and your career goals. Based on that understanding, they bring you suitable interviews at top firms. You focus on smashing the interview and together with their network, research, negotiation expertise, they will make sure you get a top of market salary. Stop job searching alone and start building your dream career today with free agency.